You're gonna love this workout for herniated discs. First, I wanna remind you today is the last day to sign up for my unlimited program, November 30th, 2020. If you're watching this in real time, registration will close tomorrow. Click the link below to sign up. And if you've missed that day, simply sign up for our wait list to know when registration opens again because I would love to have you there. Have a great workout. We're talking about your back today, specifically herniated discs. So give me one minute to chat and then we're gonna get started. You are going to need either a pillow or just a very small Pilates ball. So these exercises I'm gonna give you as a physical therapist I have found help most people with herniated discs. I wanna chat really quick about that because typically there's two different phases you're gonna be in. You're either in the acute phase, meaning you're in a lot of pain right now, I know, and I'm sorry about that. You might be getting symptoms down your leg. It might be very hard to move. These should be appropriate for you as well, but just listen to your body, okay? Don't wanna make you feel worse. If you're in the management phase, it means you've been diagnosed with a herniated disc at some point in your life, and you're now trying to prevent further injury or simply stay pain-free, and these are super appropriate for you as well, okay? So we're gonna lay down on our backs. Bring that pillow or ball with you, and I want you to put it between your knees. So I'm just gonna give you a couple simple exercises that you can do every day to help manage that back pain and help keep you strong. So we're gonna lay here with our knees bent, and I just want you to think about gently drawing your belly button in. You're not tightening anything really tight here. Just a gentle pulling in, take an inhale. Exhale, squeeze the ball. That's gonna take your full exhale. Then as soon as you inhale, you're gonna relax. Exhale, squeeze the ball again. You're not squeezing as hard as you can. You're squeezing about 50% effort, okay? So you inhale, release, exhale, squeeze. So if you're thinking already to yourself, oh, Jessica, I wanted some really hard exercises to get stronger, that's not what these are. These are physical therapy specific exercises to help you protect your back and feel better, all right? There are many exercises that you can do later on or on top of these that are gonna help you feel like those big muscles working. These are getting into the little foundation muscles. The way I explain it to people, keep doing your squeezes here while I'm talking, okay? The way I explain it to people is your body is this building, right? This big, beautiful skyscraper that we have to work on. But if you don't have a strong foundation for that building, then an injury or something, a hurricane is gonna come along, blow that building over. So I am building the foundation for you. That's what we're doing here. We're building the foundation so that you can then do all the other things you wanna do, whether it's running a marathon or just getting up and down off the floor, playing with your grandkids, whatever you wanna do, you can do that with that strong foundation we're building. But you know if you've been in back pain before what it feels like to not have that foundation strong. It's a hard place to be, okay? So that's what this video is doing. All right, so we've got a few ball squeezes. Just do one more for me. This is working your inner thighs. Very important, they come up and attach to your pelvis. It's gonna help stabilize that whole pelvic and low back area, okay? So really important. And then you can set that to the side. And we're gonna come back to the same position we were just in. So again, I want you to think about drawing that belly button just gently in, and we're gonna lift the right leg up to what we call tabletop in Pilates, lower it back down, and then the left leg. Very slow and controlled like this, all right? So again, depending on what place you are in with your herniated disc pain and injury, this is either going to feel very difficult or very easy. I'm okay with either one, all right? If you have to really work for it, that's what I want you to think about is just trying to maintain the control here so that your pelvis doesn't move around. What we're doing is waking up the lower abdominals a little bit. And if this feels very easy for you, let me show you the next variation. You're gonna start here with your legs up and lower one down and lift. And you can feel this is a progression for your lower abdominals, okay? The goal still is to keep your back in the same position. Don't let your back arch when the leg lowers down. 
and make sure that you're breathing. And we'll just do a few more. So we've got inner thighs that we worked first. Again, a big part that people forget about that helps to stabilize the low back. We're getting into our lower abdominals. Let's do two more. Whatever version you're doing is great. Nice job. Hug your knees in, straighten the left leg out and just give that right knee a squeeze. Okay, let's just get some fluid moving in that hip joint, a little compression there. See if you can keep your tailbone down. And then go ahead and slowly just switch legs. Just a little stretch before we move on. Motion is lotion, remember that. So even when you're in pain, you need to find some safe ways to move. Okay, so we're gonna roll on to our sides. So I'm on my left side. We're gonna hit our outer hip, again, really important to help stabilize this area. These are called clamshells. I want your hips stacked and your feet stacked, your knees stacked. So they're all on top of each other. My feet are in line with my tailbone. I'm gonna lift just my top knee and then lower it back down. And important here, I'm only lifting it as high as I can that my hip doesn't roll back, meaning watch this, if I lift and I keep going, that's too far. So it's only as much as the knee can lift, the feet stay together, and the hip stays stacked. From a physical therapy perspective, this is called rotary stabilization of your spine. <laughs> That just means we're teaching your spine to be stable with a rotary component added in the hip, but it's also gonna work your hip rotators into your gluteus medius and your piriformis. Again, really important when we're talking about helping to stabilize the back, all right? Nice job, two more. Nice job, and take your time. We're just gonna go ahead and go to the other side. You can roll over, you can switch sides. And then find yourself in that same position. Hips are stacked. My feet are in line with my tailbone. And you're gonna lift the top knee. So these exercises, again, from a physical therapy perspective, I recommend my clients do them every day, at least for 30 days, to make sure that we're getting that strength where we need it, teaching the body how to move again, and building that foundation. That's what I want you to think of before you think, oh, I think I'm feeling better, I'm just gonna run and do all the big stuff I wanna do. Make sure that you're not forgetting these foundation exercises too. It will help you prevent injury long-term. Okay, good, let's do three more. Doing great. And last one. Nice, and I'm gonna have you roll onto your stomach. All right, we have two more we're gonna do here for these kind of basic physical therapy exercises for this. I'm gonna have you lay all the way down and your hands are gonna be under your forehead. Your legs are hip distance apart. Okay, so here also, think what we did at the beginning. I want you to think of just gently drawing your belly button up, like there's a hot coal underneath it and you don't wanna to touch. So there's a hot coal under your belly button and you're just barely lifting it up off the mat. Keep the right leg straight, reach it away from you, and then lift it up towards the ceiling and back down, just the right leg. It will not lift very high, most likely. And I want you to think about trying not to let your back arch when you lift the leg. So we're trying to only do hip extension right now. This is activating your hamstring and your glute, your gluteus maximus. That's the purpose of this exercise from my perspective is I wanna activate those glute muscles. One more. Nice, then we have another side to do. Reach the leg long first, 
and then keep it totally straight when you lift it up. Don't let your knee bend. So think about locking your knee. Head and shoulders are relaxed. Good, last two. Nice job. Separate your feet, mat distance apart. Hands underneath your shoulders. When you're ready, you're gonna do what we call a press up. In Pilates, we call it swan. Basically, we're going into extension. You may very well not go this high, okay? I do not have a herniated disc, so you very well may go very small compared to that, and that is okay. I just want you to come up, like even if you're right here, and then back down, that's all right. You're going nice and slow. Prone press up. So extension in general is a happy place for a disc versus forward flexion that we try to avoid, especially if you're in an, an acute phase. All right, so these might feel stiff, but see how you do after about five. See if they start to make the pain a little bit less. We'll do just about two more. Last one. Nice job. Come back down. Take a rest on one cheek. And then slowly press yourself up. Back to a seated position to let your body rest. Great, great job. So like I said, those exercises I would do every day for 30 days to help build that strong foundation, make yourself feel better, help prevent further injury. Great job. Thanks so much for stopping by. Remember, subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified every time a new video comes up. Like and comment on this video and let me know what you thought. You can also always come over to jessicavalantpilates.com to find all the resources I have for living a healthy lifestyle, including full-length workout videos, healthy recipes, and a community I would love for you to be a part of. So I'll see you there.